Good morning, everybody. Good morning, John. And good morning to everybody who's watching this service out in Facebook land. A very warm welcome to you as well. Nice to see you all. These are our first tentative steps back into this place of worship. And I'm glad that you've joined us. And this is rather historic because you're the first people for at least three months who have actually worshipped in this place. So give yourselves all a quick big round of applause. Well done. Well done. Now there are going to be some housekeeping notices first from Mike. Mike Halliwell. Um, cool. Uh, Mike, Mike. Hello and welcome. Um, as John said, I'm Mike Halliwell. Um, just as, this, as John said, some housekeeping notes which we will be using from now on. Um, there will be communion, but the communion will be given to you where you are in the pews by John, and it will only be given to you by a wafer. He will offer it to you on a platter, and you pick it up. Uh, so he won't touch the, the wafers at all. If you don't want to take communion at this time, just let him know. When we, um, when we leave church, we will leave from the back onwards. We've filled up from the front and we'll leave from the back onwards and then that way people won't actually pass each other. Um, there won't be a collection as such, but the offertory plate, should you wish to put any money in the offertory plate, is on the table as you go out. Please, if you wish to, wash your hands on the way out uh, afterwards. I think that, it, oh, one more thing. The, um, yes, thank you so much. Everybody's waving their red books at me. Um, <laughs> the red books in your white envelopes are for you to keep, okay? So on the way out this morning, please take them with you and bring them back with you when you come to church uh, the next time, okay? That way, um, it avoids cross-contamination. Obviously, nobody's touched these for three months, so they are coronavirus-free, and you take them home and they will stay that way, okay? God bless you. Thank you. And when you're all fed up with the uh, uh, coronavirus uh, um, uh, rules and regulations, just go down to your local pub and jostle with everyone there. It's a said service, unfortunately. We'd love to sing, but we are not allowed to. The Church of England and the government say we're not allowed to sing. So we're saying the service. On page one, grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And also with you. And over the page, let us all pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocate in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolved to keep God's commandments, and to live in love and peace with all. A moment of silence, bringing to mind our faults and faith. Please join me in saying together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through
through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins. Confirm and strengthen you in all goodness and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand. We're saying the glory of God. We can't sing, but we can praise God in these words. With me. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. O God, the protector of all who trust in you, without whom nothing is strong, nothing is holy, increase and multiply upon us your mercy that with you as our ruler and guide, we may so pass through things temporal, that we lose not our hold on things eternal. Grant this, Father, for our Lord Jesus Christ's sake, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Chris is going to bring our two readings to us. The first reading is from Zechariah, chapter 9, verses 9 to 12. Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, daughter of Jerusalem. See, your king comes to you righteous and having salvation gentle and riding on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. I will take away the chariots from Ephraim and the war horses from Jerusalem, and the battle bow will be breaker, broken. He will proclaim peace to the nations. His rule will extend from sea to sea and from the river to the ends of the earth. As for you, because of the blood of my covenant with you, I will free your prisoners from the waterless pit. Return to your fortress, O prisoners of hope. Even now I announce that I will restore twice as much to you. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. And I'm reading from chapter 11, verses 16 to 19 and 25 to 30. To what can I compare this generation? They are like children sitting in the marketplace and calling out to others. We played the flute for you, but you wouldn't dance. We sang a dirge, and you did not mourn. For John came neither eating nor drinking, and they say, he has a demon. The Son of Man came eating and drinking, and they say, here is a glutton and a drunkard, and a friend of tax collectors and sinners. But wisdom is proved right by her actions. At that time, Jesus said, 
I praise you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and learned and revealed them to little children. Yes, Father, for this was your good pleasure. All things have been committed to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and those to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Nice social distance change over there. May I speak and may we all hear. In the name of Jesus Christ, he's present here today to speak to us. He's present in our hearts and minds. He's present in our homes. Amen. Amen. Have a seat. Um, ever had kids who just don't want to do anything? Any of you? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Oh, you'll remember it well, won't you? I'm bored. Okay, like to go to beach? Nah, don't want to do that. I'm bored. Well, how about going for a cycle ride? Or, or a walk? Nah, don't want to do that. I'm bored. Well, watch the telly then. Oh, there's nothing on. I'm bored. And no matter what you suggest, no matter how creative and pleasing you try and be, they're just going to refuse whatever you try and please, with, please them with. Whatever you offer them, oh, it's never good enough. And they are really determined that you will not help them. I like football. I like seeing the skill of players when they dribble the ball around the defenders, like City did with Liverpool this week and then strike into the goal. I also like seeing good defending as well, when a player neatly tackles the attacker and takes the ball off him or her in these days. I do not particularly like that cynical means of defending when the defender hacks down the attacker and plays the man and not the ball. Now, I don't like that at all. That's not skillful, that's just brutal. Chops them in the ankles or the shins, and down they come. Terrible, that terrible. Hold those two things in your mind, because we are going to visit them again. Now this gospel reading that you've just heard is in many ways as relevant today as it was 2,000 years ago. God sent two very different people to proclaim the message of his kingdom. One was the ascetic, pleasure-denying, prophetically styled John the Baptist. He was rough and tough and bold and demanded repentance because God was coming in power with his Messiah to sort the people out. Whoa, that John the Baptist, he's a bit extreme, isn't he? He's a bit mad. Huh, maybe he's not mad. Maybe he's got a spiritual problem. Maybe he's driven by a demon or something like that. And of course, when you've got the Gerasene demoniac and people like that around you, uh, that, that would not be a, 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 a totally unrealistic supposition. You might quite understand that thought when a chap like John the Baptist chose to live in isolation and denied himself to the extreme. Oh, he could have a real spiritual problem, that guy. But then on the other hand, 
On the other extreme, there was Jesus. And what did they say about him? <laughs> Not very holy, is he? Just look at him, attending all those feasts, boozing away like an old drunkard and glutton. Just look at the company he keeps as well. They're a bad lot, tax collectors, sinners, people who got rich off the backs of the poor and living in luxury. <laughs> Would God really bless a ministry like that? Well, not for me. And that is exactly what the religious leaders and the like were saying about John the Baptist and Jesus. They weren't taking any notice of the message that God wanted them to hear. And like dirty footballers, they were playing the man and not the ball. They attacked the messenger and neglected the message. And I am absolutely positive that it would not have made the slightest difference as to who God sent. What their lifestyle was. Whether they set themselves apart from the world or whether they incarnated themselves into the world and indulged in the good things that God has given us to enjoy. No matter who God sent, no matter who was coming with the message, they would have found fault because they did not want to address the message that was being spoken to them in their ears. And so Jesus says, you lot, you religious leaders, and those who are sympathising with them, you're like kids. No matter how God tries to communicate with you, you'll just have none of it. We've come celebrating life like Jesus, like kids dancing for joy. Well, you'll have none of that, will you? Or if God sent someone really serious and sombre, like John the Baptist, and we play at funerals, well, you won't join in that. Too happy, too sad, there's no pleasing you lot at all. And that's what Jesus was saying in this passage. It kind of feels a bit familiar, doesn't it? Even any of you, any of you fans of John Betjeman? John Betjeman, the, 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 the former poet laureate from nearly a century ago, I think, he was brilliant. And, and, and he could see this in, in congregations. He could see it in congregations. And he, he, he read a wonderful poem. Uh, he, he wrote a wonderful poem called Blame the Vicar. Oh, and you can tell it's one of my favourites. Yeah? And this is just an excerpt from it. One parson came and people said, Alas, our former vicar's dead. And this new man is far too low than dear old reverend so-and-so, and far too earnest in his preaching. We really do not like his teaching. He seems to think we're simply fools who've never been to Sunday schools. That vicar left, and by and by, a new one came. Whew, he's much too high. The people said, too like a saint, his incense makes our name is faint. So now he's left, and they're alone, without a vicar of their own. The living's been amalgamated with one next door they've always hated. I love that poem. And, and if, you've, if, you, if you've never read it, Go away and read it. It's really, it's really class. And a lot of Betjeman's work is class. He was a rogue, but he was a good Christian rogue. But, do you see what I mean? They play the man and not the ball. Even the Archangel Gabriel will not suit some people. And you know what? The longer I live, the more I'm convinced that the, pe that the problem with unbelief, the problem with unbelief is this. Not... I can't believe, not I've got genuine, genuine uh, 
theological, philosophical questions about this. No. The longer I live, the more I realise the problem is not I can't believe, but rather I won't believe. The problem in society is not I can't believe, but is I won't believe. People won't believe. They refuse to believe, and whatever evidence you present to them, there will always be a problem. And do you know how I know this? Well, I'll tell you how I know this. Because that was me at one time. Yeah, I don't come from a Christian family. That was me at one time. And I remember I had all the evidence presented to me but I just did not want to know as an unbeliever. No matter what my friend who wanted to tell me about Jesus said to me, my ears were closed. Oh, I could hear what he was saying, but I was not listening. And I was not going to have any of that God stuff in my life. I refused to believe. But I dressed it up in all kinds of questions. Like, oh, well, you say God made everything. Well, who made God? And what about the problem of suffering? Nah. There were excuses. Jesus said these very powerful words which give us an insight into how people do believe. Jesus said, I thank you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, because you have hidden these things from the wise and intelligent and have revealed them to infants. Yes, Father, for such was your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, listen to this, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. I'll say it again. They're not my words. All right? This is straight out of the Gospel, straight out of the mouth of, Je mouth of Jesus. All things have been handed over to be my by Father, and no one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And I know that to be a fact also. Because even though I refuse to believe what my friend was telling me, I still have an experience of God. God making his presence felt in my bedroom that I shared with my two younger brothers. And it was powerful and it was convincing, and it changed me. It was divine revelation from God himself, and that night I came to faith. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son, and anyone to whom the Son chooses to reveal him. And yes, I'm neither particularly wise nor intelligent. Uh, I came from a working class background. I didn't do well at school, but I believe because God revealed himself to me. But that is how I came to faith. It was amazing grace. I didn't ask for it. I didn't want it. I certainly didn't deserve it. God, in his divine providence, revealed himself one night to me. So when you talk to people about the Lord, don't worry when they argue the toss with you. That's just the way people who don't want to believe are. So do pray for them. Pray that God will reveal himself to them. Because Jesus says it's through revelation 
that people come to faith in him. Just think of all those brothers and sisters in Iran who are coming to faith independently in Jesus because God reveals himself to them in a dream, usually with Jesus in it. And that's the way it works. The world is always going to play the man and not the ball. The world is always going to be like, oh, this is too hard and this is too easy and oh, it doesn't suit us. But don't worry. Pray for them and ask the Lord to reveal himself to them in their hearts. In Jesus' name. Do you now please stand? The words of the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, but of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven and was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. It's time for our prayers. We sit or kneel. Thank you that some of us are able to meet together this morning in this place, to listen to your word, to praise you, and to pray to you. Please bless this time together and strengthen us with a renewed sense of your presence among us. Help us to support and encourage one another and all those who are not physically here this morning through our faith and our life. Give us wisdom how best to work together to serve you for the building of your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Father God, we pray for our world and its leaders as we navigate through lifting the lockdown in as safe and effective way as possible. Give great wisdom to those in positions of authority. Show them how to put the health and well-being of all people before politics or their own personal popularity. Help nations to work together to share information and expertise with each other especially those countries that have little infrastructure and scarce medical resources. Lord, heal the nation and turn people's hearts to you. Reveal yourself and open people's hearts and ears to believe. Lord, 
in your mercy. Hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, thank you for inviting us to come to you in our weariness and with our burdens, promising to give us rest. We pray for ourselves and those around us. Comfort those who are struggling in whatever way. Strengthen carers. Heal those who are sick. Give peace to those who are anxious and resilience and rest to those who are tired. Show us how to be good companions to those who are lonely and to be generous to those in need. Watch over children and young people who are missing their friends and education and other life experiences at the moment. Help them to find good, wholesome ways to engage, grow and learn. And as you promised, Lord, bless us and make us a blessing to those around us. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, Son our, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Now we can't handshake or anything like that, and certainly can't hug. We're not allowed to do that. But would you please stand? We share the peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Lord. On future occasions, when you get used to this thing in church, I might invite one or two of you to share the peace like we've been doing online. But I'm going to leave you out this morning, okay? But God's peace be with you all, wherever you may be. The offertory, please. Get some sanitizer? Yes. Yeah. Oh, it's there, thank you. Right, I missed that. <laughs> right, I won't catch anything off of me. I'm certainly not going to breathe on the bread anymore. Um, what I think I will do rather though is I will just drop the wafers into your hands if that's okay. Then there's no chance of you touching anything and cross contaminating. It's all very complicated. And uh, we need a plate for the wafers. Two. Two. Oh, hang on, there it is. Yep, see <laughs> All these new ways are uh, very confusing. Eucharistic prayer H, please. P. 
page 38. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. It is right to praise you, Father, Lord of all creation. In your love you made us for yourself. When we turned away, you did not reject us, but came to meet us in your Son. Together, you embraced us as your children and welcomed us to sit and eat with you. In Christ you shared our life, that we might live in him and he in us. He opened his arms of love upon the cross and made for all the perfect sacrifice for sin. On the night he was betrayed at supper with his friends, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to them, saying, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His body is the bread of life. At the end of supper, taking the cup of wine, he gave you thanks and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Father, we do this in remembrance of him. His blood is shed for all. As we proclaim his death and resurrection and celebrate his rising in glory, send your Holy Spirit that this bread and this wine may be to us the body and blood of your dear Son. As we eat and drink these holy gifts, make us one in Christ our risen Lord. With your whole church around the world, we offer you this sacrifice of praise and lift our voice to joy, the eternal song of heaven. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Page 12. The Lord's Prayer. As our Saviour taught us, we sit on you. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. So even though I'm going to say, draw near with faith, I do want you to stay where you are. The communion will come to you. Draw near with faith, receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ which he gave for you, and his blood which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that Jesus died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
Let's pray. Eternal God, comfort of the afflicted and healer of the broken, you have fed us at the table of life and hope. Teach us the ways of gentleness and peace, that the whole world may acknowledge the kingdom of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And together we all pray on page 16. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. The peace of God which passes all understanding. Keep your hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit rest powerfully upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Will you please stand? Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen. There's no rush for you to depart, but we do ask that you. Uh, exit the church from the back uh, outwards. I can't shake hands, but I'll just say, if any of you need me, give me a phone call, okay? God bless you. Thank you for coming to our first communion in our benefice since March. <laughs>